Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to the Audio Analyst. Pardon me. I first met Dr. Douglas Hurlbert, the incredible force behind Dynamic Sounds Associates, in the mid-1990s when I moved to Southern Maryland to manage a chain of fitness centers as he was a member of my newly discovered local listening group. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Doug's passion for electronics, his education, and his remarkably impressive professional accomplishments, please see my introduction to the world premiere review I did of his DSA Pre-1 line stage for Enjoy the Music in February of 2017. Now, Beside having had the distinction of being the first to review his introductory product, the Phono stage that heralded the arrival of DSA, the Phono One, back in 2004, I also introduced you to the remarkable DSA Pre-1 line stage in January of 2017 and shared the world premiere review of the DSA Amp One in January of 2021. Now, Doug provides remarkable detail on the design both its inspiration and its execution at the DSA website, where you can read its laboratory-grade, test instrument-like instruction manual. And for those of you who are really hungry for the nitty-gritty, I highly recommend such consumption. I have provided links for such reading in today's description. Retaining the DSA's familial appearance, that's 17 inches wide, 11 and a half inches deep, and standing five inches tall, or just over six, with its included four specially modified rise footers from Critical Mass Systems installed, and weighing 30 pounds, the front panel of the Phono 3 chassis is separated horizontally into three distinct sections, matching the earlier Phono 2 and Pre-1 and Amp 1's appearance. Here, while the central four inch wide section, which protrudes by half an inch, retains the natural silver finish shared by both Pre-1 and Amp-1, the left and right sections of this panel are matte black. Now, while this may only be an aesthetic consideration, I found that two-tone face to be somewhat less appealing, especially if one were to have the Phono 3 integrated into the same installation with those previously all silver faced products. No biggie. Now, the breadth of features available with the Phono 3 speak for themselves. It supports up to three different tone arm cartridge combinations, allowing either single ended or fully balanced inputs. From left to right, the back panel has its IEC power socket, a rocker power switch, a turntable grounding post, a selectable set of outposts both single-ended or balanced, followed by the three sets of inputs, A, B, and C, each offering single-ended or balanced connections. It offers easy selection of moving coil or moving magnet loading for each input and a range of gain steps that will surely suit any need, including 40, 46, 50, 56, 60, or 66 decibel settings, all within two-tenths of one decibel of accuracy. Now, the manual selection controls occupy the left side of the faceplate, and your choices are stored in memory after selection and are automatically recalled and loaded upon whichever input is selected. And the gain may also be adjusted from your listening position using the DSA Phono 3's remote control. The top center of the faceplate houses the digital LED display showing the cartridge loading in use for the selected input, the equalization indicator LEDs, and the infrared detector for the remote. A cleverly concealed panel under the lower half of the center of the front panel, below the LED display and behind the DSA's logo, allows for the physical control of all three inputs, including moving magnet or moving coil selection, and all five of the available selectable playback equalization curves, which aside from the standard RIAA curve includes those 
for Columbia Pre-RIAA, DECA FFRR Pre-RIAA, Columbia 78 RPM, and DECA FFRR 78 RPM. And believe it or not, further alternative equalization curves can be added by request. Now, cartridge loading options are exceptionally flexible, offering moving coil resistances adjustable in 10 ohm increments from 10 ohms to 2,550 ohms for each input. Now that yields a total of 255 distinct settings. Moving magnet loading capacitance is also sublimely adjustable in 10 picofarad steps from 120 picofarads to 1,400 picofarads, again for each input, offering a total of 127 distinct settings. Now, the Phono 3's internal memory stores the last loading selected for each input, which is recalled and loaded upon the selection of each input whenever it is chosen. Now, not only may these settings be adjusted from your listening position using your remote control, but if you don't find that versatility to be granular enough, you have the option to add custom loading on the A input. Now, while such custom loading cannot be stored in memory, it is selected when that A input is chosen. The right side of the faceplate includes a stereo mono selector, including the ability for channel differencing in mono, left minus right or right minus left, which allows for fine azimuth adjustment of the tone arm cartridge by ear. A phase inversion selector, the low pass filter, and all three operational modes, run, mute, and standby. And differing from the Phono 2, the Phono 3 is fully balanced, eliminating the need to engage the mono mode when using a true mono cartridge. Now, finally, the solid and comfortable remote control, aside from offering such options as mute and run, allows the user to manipulate and fine-tune the display's LED brightness, the gain, the cartridge loading, and to change the output phase, or polarity, from the comfort of your listening chair. It's quite remarkable. What? Like that isn't enough? Come on, this is the most user-friendly, easiest to adjust, and most fully modifiable phono stage I have ever seen, regardless of price. And while the Pre-1 and Amp-1 will no longer be manufactured, the Phono 3 is Doug's dream project, and it will remain in production with full support for the foreseeable future. And if I'm honest, though I could probably quite comfortably live without much of its uber convenient remote capability, as I have managed to before its arrival, it does offer you an otherwise unmatched level of both convenience and flexibility. Now, over my time with the Phono 3 in my system, I had the opportunity to audition it with a number of moving coil cartridges, including an airtight PC-1, a Transfiguration Temper-V, and an overachieving budget Denon DL-103D with the full AJ Vandenhall treatment, which included a new boron cantilever and a Vandenhall Type 1 stylus, which is 4 by 70 micrometers. Now, the bulk of my listening, however, was done with my reference at Surreal Gold loaded at 100 ohms, and the clarity, transparency, and texturally replete sonic window opened into LPs with this uber-flexible phono stage in play were simply exceptional. One of the most important attributes of any low-level signal device such as a phono stage is the degree to which it rejects and inhibits self-generated noise. The Phono 3 affords a remarkably silent performance, one that tenders great dividends. You know, when music is free to flow from such stark quietness, uh, one that is among the very darkest I've heard from any Phono stage in its class, its remarkably tranquil operation contributes significantly to enhancing every other benefit realized by this extraordinary device. It is no secret that I consider the accurate recreation of the lowest frequencies in the audio spectrum to be utterly crucial 
to the authentic reproduction of the entire musical envelope, from its overall fidelity of tone, color, and balance, to affording a remarkably authentic representation of the acoustic of recordings. Bass extension with the Phono 3, including its resultant pitch definition, texture, and transient speed, was simply unflappable during all my time with it. Listening to music as diverse as Sanson's Symphony No. 3 in C minor, Op. 78, the 1958 Mercury Living Presence version, the Sheffield drum record, the 1981 Sheffield Drum Lab 14, or the Hans Zimmer, Benjamin Walfish original motion picture soundtrack, Blade Runner 2049, the 2017 epic Alon Sleeping Giant limited numbered release, proved the bass reproduction of the Phono 3 to be among the most accurate and extended I have yet heard. No small feat, in all honesty. Not only could it plumb the ultimate depths, rendering subsonic information captured on some LPs, but its ability to portray the attributes of drum skin tone and texture, to regenerate the authenticity of the sound of rosin on bow friction as it excites the strings on a double bass, or to reconstruct the attack, slam, and sheer exhilaration of an electric bass guitar string plucked or picked into motion is virtually without reproach. Mid-bass and lower mid-range are richly textured and vibrantly colored, helping to give instruments an almost eerie resultant intensity and body. Mid-range tone is blustering with life, rich in detail and full of harmonic bloom. Instrument fundamentals from piano to violin to guitar, even human voice, are rendered so realistically, awash with texture and convincing dimensionality, as to reel a surprisingly and intoxicating lifelike quality. If you insist on unrestricted extension without etch, nuanced detail without edge or glare, and articulate, airy, high-frequency performance, as I do, then the Phono 3 should be at the top of your short list. I was repeatedly struck by its unwavering ability to reconstruct delicate treble detail, not only rendered with engaging finesse, but served up with pinpoint spatial specificity and textural authority as well. As an example, listening to the subtle flavorings of the struck triangle buried deep stage right in the title track Asia from the 1997 Steely Dan masterpiece of the same name on the 2007 Cisco Music release. Very often, this instrument's delicate and ethereal contributions are all but silenced, almost concealed by the complexity of the rest of this intricate arrangement. The Phono 3 fluently extricated both its subtle flavor and refined, distinct texture from the meticulously woven fabric of this complexly constructed jazz-influenced composition. Bravo, Doug. Further, its accomplishments in decoding and reconstructing a realistic and convincing soundstage as well as defining accurately sized images, is among the best available. Listening to the opening of Russia's Witch Hunt from their 1981 magnum opus, Moving Pictures, the 2015 anthem reissue, numerous varieties of subtle percussive sounds populate the soundstage. Nothing here was misplaced, nothing wandered, and nothing was either slighted or accentuated. The opening tom roll was breathtaking, revealing not only left-to-right positioning, but front-to-back cues as well. The intricacies of Respighi's Feste Romano, The Pines of Rome, the 1982 Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab UHQR release, were unraveled with a delicacy and a superb degree of the focus of instrumental placement. The veritable cacophony of orchestration from the opening of Prokofiev's Scythian Suite, the Mercury Classic reissue, was constrained to near-perfect focus. The Phono 3 offers uncanny ability, bordering on the finest available, to present a realistic sense of the liveness of the room as vocals and instruments decay. 
its overall level of performance and the resultant level of engagement that affords must be recognized as representing a pinnacle of performance in its class. And given its virtually unparalleled flexibility, its insane degree of remote adaptability, and its otherwise uncolored and exceedingly neutral natural voice, I simply cannot name another phono stage at any price that will allow you this level of flexibility to hone in on and maximize the native sound characteristics of your chosen cartridge or cartridges. Now, while it falls somewhat short of delivering the ultimate in some regards, such as absolutely precise settle times, size and scale replication, and the fine dimensional articulation of all but a handful of considerably more expensive world-class devices, such as the Boulder 2108, the Solution 755, or the utterly seductive and intoxicating Valve Amplification Company's Statement Phono Stage. Its accomplishments put it well to the head of its class. Short of investing considerably more dough, the Phono 3 comes as close as you could possibly want. There is no question that I could quite comfortably live with its remarkably uncolored, unassuming, and natural sonic voicing without concern. Now, I'm, I'm forced to a similar conclusion that I offered with the evaluation of the superlative and now discontinued DSA Pre-1, which is among the line stages used for this evaluation. And that is that it offers extraordinarily refined sound that, while unmistakably exceptional, never calls attention to itself as being sonically spectacular or in any way through either flaws of commission or omission drew attention to itself as a component. It would appear to have no discernible voice of its own and as such delivers a presentation in which you will find yourself utterly and inescapably immersed in musical expression, never caught up in the sound. Guys, it is one of the most affordable phono stages that can pull off this ultimate vanishing act and has really won me over. And that is why I can most enthusiastically recommend it. Thank you for taking the time to drop by today. Please click the subscribe and notify buttons if you haven't already. Be sure to share your comments and questions. And please don't forget to like and share links to your favorite episodes with your friends or on social media. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.